When it comes to public health dentistry, evaluation is a crucial component of ensuring the success of dental programs and interventions. Evaluation allows us to assess the effectiveness of our efforts, identify areas for improvement, and make data-driven decisions that can improve oral health outcomes for communities. Evaluation can thus be defined as the collection and analysis of information to determine the program's performance. There are mainly two types of evaluation, formative evaluation and summative evaluation. Do you remember in schools how we used to have formative assessments in the initial part of the session? Similarly, formative evaluation is basically the examination of the activities conducted during the initial stages of a program. For example, if we have introduced the fluoride rinse program in a school, but upon formative evaluation, say three days later, we notice that the changes have not occurred as per the plan. Based on this evaluation, we can thus make the necessary changes in the initial stages. Now, formative evaluation can further be divided into two types. When the evaluation is done to determine whether a particular program is needed, it's referred to as relevance evaluation. On the other hand, if the evaluation is done to measure if the process is being carried out as per the plan, we refer to it as the process evaluation. Circling back to the types of evaluation, our second type is the summative evaluation. Taking our previous example, as you might recollect, end of year exams in schools used to be called summative exams. Similarly, when the evaluation for a program is carried out towards the end or after the program has ended, it is called the summative type of evaluation. This can be divided into two types. In cases where the summative evaluation is carried out to measure the extent to which the program has achieved its target outcomes, it is referred to as the outcome evaluation. On the other hand, when we evaluate the long-term results of a program, we call it the impact evaluation. The World Health Organization has specified four criteria to keep in mind while evaluating a program. The first criterion is effectiveness which focuses on whether the program was effective enough to achieve the objectives that were set. Second, the evaluation process is to measure the efficiency of a program to ensure that the resources spent are not being exploited. Third, based on the needs of the population, the investigator must ensure that the objectives and the desired outcomes of the program are appropriate. Lastly, the investigator must also ensure that the target population to which the services are being provided is actually adequate. Moving on, let us now discuss the steps involved in evaluating a program. The first step is to determine what exactly is to be evaluated. Here, we basically need to be clear that we have to evaluate the structure, outcome and process or the SOP of the particular program in question. After we have established what is to be evaluated, we then have to establish the standards and criteria against which the pre-decided structure, outcome, and process can be compared. This is important to determine how well the desired objectives have been attained. For structural criteria, we can have certain preferred types of physical facilities and equipment against which we can compare the facilities that were planned to be included in the program. Similarly, process criteria could be understood with the example of conducting the process of dental checkups every six months for school-going children to prevent or treat any dental condition while it is in its early stages. Examples of the criteria for outcome could include alterations in health status or behavior resulting from health care which could be positive or negative. Moving on, our third step is to plan the methodology or the format which would be followed throughout the program for the collection of the desired information. Now that we know how the information is to be collected, our next step is to gather the information. The type and amount of information required will depend on the purpose of the evaluation. Once the data has been collected, it has to then be analyzed and interpreted to provide feedback on the program in the shortest possible time. This also allows for discussing the results of the evaluation. This is then followed by taking action based on the results. For the evaluation to be truly productive, actions which support, strengthen, or modify the services being provided are necessary to be taken. 
There are mainly four types of actions that can be taken based on the evaluation results. If the results are not very impressive, we can choose to either terminate the project or reorganize the project entirely. On the other hand, if the results seem satisfactory, we can either proceed with the program or fine tune the project, that is make small adjustments to it and then proceed ahead. Lastly, it is important to note that the process of evaluation is an ongoing process and hence our last step is to re-evaluate. This is mainly aimed at making health activities more relevant, efficient and effective. Now, to quickly recap, there are mainly seven steps to be followed to evaluate a certain. It first begins with determining what is to be evaluated, followed by establishing the standards and criteria to evaluate the objectives and goals of the program. This is then followed by planning the methodology for collecting data and then gathering the data. The fifth step is to analyze the data collected and then based on the results, we take the necessary action regarding the future of the project. Finally, re-evaluation is an important step that should not be missed out since it is important to ensure that the health activities being carried out in the programs are actually effective and relevant. In conclusion, Evaluation is a critical tool in public health dentistry that allows us to assess the effectiveness of programs and interventions, make data-driven decisions, and improve oral health outcomes for communities. By incorporating evaluation into our dental programs, we can ensure that we are providing the best possible care for our patients. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.